What's going on guys, your boy Amazing, we're back with another video, and in today's video, guys, me going over the brand new Season uh, 8 of Underground Labyrinth, I could be wrong, but uh, yeah, we're hopping in here, guys, yeah, Season 8, and uh, this is the complete Labyrinth guide here, guys, in this video, we're going to be going over everything you need to know in, in the actual Labyrinth, and going over all the important things, while teaching you guys how to actually beat the fight. Now, for the first part here, you guys can see that it, has, it actually is a random character select, so no matter what character you get really at the beginning, guys, try to get a character that could kind of benefit you for like later in the fight so like my idea with jillian here is that i get her because she has a 30% uh, hp increase for uh green uh allies right so obviously that was a uh, a good pick from the jump and i was like okay i'll start with jillian and that was kind of my uh thought process right there but yeah if you guys enjoy videos like this man definitely make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already and uh yeah man we're gonna be explaining uh the rest of this stuff while the you know going through the fight here so you guys can see right here jillian is just uh fighting through the uh first stage right here and uh yeah i mean the early bit of the labyrinth will probably be the most difficult depending on the characters that you get given right i didn't really get given crazy characters as well and i had to kind of just you know um pick the ones that were good and right here guys we actually got really lucky with a 12 percent attack buff there too um but yeah no that, that was like a really good uh pickup right there and then we always go for the awakening stars guys that's always the priority right here with the next character pick we did get a nunchuck bond which i was like okay that's gonna be pretty good for the uh the AoE clearing, and I was like, okay, no one else uh, on the list right there that I had as options was really good. Plus, Bon, bon is green, so he does actually benefit from the uh, increased stats. And then, uh, going left or right here, guys, you actually want to take the right path. Um, the right path, in my opinion, is going to be the better way to go about it, because the left path um, is a little bit more difficult, because you have the double fights right there. Um, this one also lets you heal in between, which I think is a really nice like spot to, uh, to kind of get some heals. So, yeah, man, that's pretty much the explanation here for the early bit of the, the fight, guys. So, what I'll I'll do is i'll let the video play and then once we actually come back to an important part where i have something to mention i will actually come back and uh, talk to you guys so enjoy the clip here guys and we'll come back with uh, another important detail All right, guys, so hopping into the next passive that we got going on here, we actually do get a increased crit chance, or we could get the strength or uh, red allies. And I was like, okay, well, we don't really have any red or blue allies there. And I was like, okay, I think it's fine if we actually do it where we just go for the, uh, you know, the max gauge crit chance increase. And I thought that was fine. And then uh, right here, guys, we do go for the awakening star and the ultimate move gauge. This is just better because the more awakening stars you go for, the more stats you're just going to have overall later in the fight. And then on this character pick right here, guys, we don't have really too many good options. But I like I know from uh, past experience though that the blue giant DN is a really good uh, pickup here. So I was like, okay, we'll rock her. And then uh, we do waste the uh, revive passive thing right there. And then we do have the uh, the stone right here. So you guys always want to make sure that you are leveling up the guardian stones. The reason why they're so important is because they increase your stats throughout the entire run of the fight, including the depths as well. So you want to make sure you're always picking those buffs whenever you're getting uh those unlocked so as you guys can see the first boss fight is actually a team fight so it's actually really good because um even though you can't target guild thunder you can hit everybody on the field and it's not just one boss like uh normal labyrinth bosses here guys so uh what i actually planned to do was just kind of spam the uh, nunchuck bon aoe's because he was going to do the most amount of damage and uh just a tip for you guys if you're using nunchuck bon um remember that his damage multiplier doesn't increase on the rank two it only gives him lifesteal so if you actually use the 
the regular AoE attack at rank 1, you will do more damage. And that was kind of the idea right there. Also, Bond does lower their HP related. So right there, we were lowering their HP every single turn that he wasn't getting hit. And uh, that was obviously really, really nice right there. Uh, but right here, guys, we uh, just pretty much finish off the fight. I mean, we're just attacking. We get uh, an ultimate whenever we can, right? And that's going to deal the most amount of damage. And uh, as we go through, we actually do finish out the uh, fight there, killing the Guild Thunder and moving into the floor too. So floor one is actually very easy once you get into the groove, man. And once you start like clearing through it, you shouldn't have too many issues. So now moving into the floor two, guys, we start off the uh, run right here with the uh, heal. And then we're actually going to go straight into the fight. So nothing too crazy here, guys. We'll come back again when I actually do have a choice of like a character or like a passive or something that's super important. We'll come back then. But uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the clip here, guys. And we'll come back to the next important part of the video. All right, guys, so right here on this uh, passive pick right here, it might be a toss-up between the Giants and the Demon one, guys, because I actually did have Giant DN here, and you guys will see that I actually might have made a mistake in a in a way when we actually do get to the next character pick. Now, I didn't necessarily make the mistake because by the end, you guys will understand why I picked the Demon passive and not actually the Giant passive, but you guys will see here, um, we do actually get Red Matrona, which is a really, really strong character um, to actually run on the Labyrinth because she's going to heal your team team whenever she gets super low on HP. So of all the characters there, I was like, okay, Matrona is probably the most valuable and I could actually get a lot of use out of her. And so what I did is I moved Jillian to the back and we actually had Matrona on the front line with the Dian and with the Bon. And I actually go to the right because we can actually get a, uh, what is it? A, a big box right there um, or the uh, exchange shop. And then we have another exchange shop following that too, guys. So enjoy this fight right here, guys. We'll come back to when we have the next exchange shop or next important thing that I do want to mention here. But uh, yeah, just wanted to clarify that that it could have been good that i picked the giant passive there but me picking the demon one will come into play around the end of the labyrinth so there you guys go man we'll come back to the next clip
all right guys so the underground labyrinth exchange shop here that we actually got to i went to the character pick first just to see what character options we had and as you guys can see man i saw red molascula and i also wanted to check the amount of currency that i had before i made the decision and you guys saw that i actually went for the attack buff and then i knew i had enough that i could get the uh character pick and i actually do pick red molascula now this is no bias right you know obviously she's a very good character um but the reason why i mainly picked her was because she has the revive passive right it's always going to be really strong when you have the revive passive and a taunt character because what you could do with matrona is always have her taunting to draw damage away from everyone else and then melasila will make sure she revives so that she doesn't die and by the time the fight uh for depending on however long the fight goes um matrona taunt will be very very important and this garage fight by the way um it does go on for a while it is a very very difficult fight guys so good luck on this fight this is low-key the boss of this uh of this floor um because this one was a lot more difficult than just a regular fight because you see how much damage she's able to do right and she just has a ton of heal but um yeah man that's pretty much all i wanted to mention there guys we'll come back to when we're on the actual boss of floor two All right, guys, so we just got out of the character pick there where I actually didn't pick any uh, character from the, the batch that they actually gave me. So we actually do skip over that, guys, and we do take the enhance and take the far left. Now, I could have went for the passive there, but I thought the safe play there was actually going just for the enhance since I just want to increase my stats anyway and uh, just increasing them um, by, by doing that instead of getting the passive I thought was going to be a lot better than uh, risking me losing a character in the actual fight. So now loading into this fight right here, guys, this is the final boss fight right here of Florida two so gloxinia is going to have a aoe attack disable he is going to have his commandment where he attack lowers you every time you use two skills so you definitely don't want to be using two skills with a character unless you're using it to like all rush or you're making sure that you're not going to be debuffed so that is going to be very very important now as you guys can see, Molasila's revive does come in very clutch because what we did there is we made sure we had the uh, the taunt from the turn one with Matrona, and we actually did draw the damage away from the rest of the team. And uh, what I decided to do from this point on, after ulting with Molasila, I was like, okay, let's make sure we can get a bunch of you know ultimates with Matrona and and Bon because we could actually finish off the fight there just by pushing up ultimates with them and force killing them with the ultimates. And that was the actual way to go about it, man. As you guys can see, um, because we have the Molasila revive, Glocks can do all the damage he wants but he's not going to be able to kill us guys and so we're freely just able to alt here and we actually do finish off the fight which is uh very easy yeah i mean this is not even really the hardest fight uh of the floor two i thought the uh, earlier one where you fought garage was a lot more difficult actually um but yeah not too bad not too bad so we actually do load in now to floor three guys now with floor three we actually do start with a character pick and they give me the option of red giant dn which remember she does have the giant allies damage dealt so now 
you know, we're kind of in a situation where, like, you know, that passive that I got from before, the giant ally one would have been really nice right now, right? Because we would have got 15% basic stats. But, guys, later in on this uh, floor three here, we're going to completely revamp the team, man. Right now, it looks like a giant oriented mono red team. Later on, it actually does get a complete revamp. So, you guys can watch the uh, clips here, man. We'll come back to when uh, something important happens, or I actually do explain uh, when we actually do switch the characters a little bit later in the fight. But uh, this team was still really, really strong. And because we had the combo of Deanne and Matrona. Uh, we pretty much went through a lot of the fights here without any issues. So uh, we'll hop back in when we're on the next uh, next part, guys.
All right, guys, so we're coming around the end of the floor three here. Now, not a lot of things happened that were super eventful uh, throughout pretty much most of that was just me collecting passes and just, uh, you know, going through the fights with very little uh, ease, just taking a while, though. A lot of the fights did take some time. Now, right here, I actually do make a mistake that you guys should not make uh, when actually going through this. You'll see here that I have the uh, character pick here. We do take uh, the Demon King, right? The Demon King, I was like, okay, he is the character that I could take. I already have Molasula, which is a demon, and also, I had the demon passive from before that I thought would benefit the team a little bit. So I was like, okay, Demon King is going to be a really good spot and I could swap out DN. Um, because I was like, okay, Dreyfus is at least providing the backline, uh, you know, help. Um, you know, after, uh, you know, uh, thinking about it though, I probably could have swapped Dreyfus out. Um, because I only had Red Molasula as a red character by the end of this. Because you guys will see here, we actually went straight for the uh, Guardian Stone in, uh, instantly when I actually could have went for an Awakening Star, um, which would have been a little bit better because I could have farmed the uh, rest at the, uh, in the depths but right there guys we do get the eras and demon king meliodas as a option for a pick and i was like okay well i kind of have to right like what am i gonna do not not pick him up i had to take uh demon king meliodas right there and now we actually do hop into the boss fight so uh with this team right here guys we have no issues going through it so by the time you're at this like end point of the of the labyrinth you want to kind of build either like a demon team or like a sins team or like some type of team around the end here um because the the fight at the at the very end is not hard like look at this fight right here it's not difficult at all um and you guys will see uh as the melee and the demon king kind of just like destroy it but uh yeah no like this is a uh fairly easy fight uh once you get like a really built up team and just picking the really strong characters at the end is not a bad idea just to clear it out and another thing you can do as well is like if you're not satisfied with your team once you're done the labyrinth itself you could restart and pick melee or like demon king and go back in again and get a full demon team like that or get a full sins team or whatever you're really chasing for right that's going to be a good way to go about it so yeah, in general though, like my team was really strong because I had Red Molasula with the uh, with the revive, and then the Demon King there would also get ranked up on the second turn. So like overall, like this team was just gonna be a very strong team in general, and uh, I wasn't gonna really have too many issues uh, going through with this team. So uh, yeah, guys, right there, rank three single target with Melly. We do kill the Demon Kusak, and then you know the follow up here with the uh, Melly um, and the Molasula. It's not actually gonna kill him, but uh, next turn we do get the Demon King rank up, and it is GG at that point, right? So very very easy fight here once you get the option to actually pick good characters um because throughout the most of the fight you are kind of stuck with a bunch of bad characters right so that can become an issue but once you get around to the end here guys you should be completely fine man and that is pretty much the strategy right there to beat the uh what is it the season eight underground labyrinth so very very easy stuff right here guys once you actually do finish them off right there that is the last fight of the labyrinth now we do also have the depths here which i do have uh at the end of the video here so you guys can watch through my depths to see how i went about it um, but I do actually lose in the depth. So what I'm probably going to do is just reset my team and get a brand new team as well. But uh, yeah, you guys can see there we do clear it. And then uh, yeah, the last bit of the video, guys, is just going to be me clearing through the depth. So if you guys want to see the depths and, uh, you know, my uh, attempts going through it, then uh, you can watch the rest of the video here. But this is pretty much it, though, guys. Um, if you want to restart on your own, you definitely can. So uh, yeah, man, I hope you guys do enjoy the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe as always. If you guys want to see more videos like this, definitely let me know in the comment section below, guys. And that is the Underground Lab guide let me know in the comment section below if this video helped and we'll see you guys on the next one man see you later guys